Usikose kipindi cha ufufuo na uzima kinacholetwa kwenu na kanisa la Glory of Christ Tanzania ambapo watu waliochukuliwa katika mazingira ya kutatanisha yaani misukule wanarudishwa toka misukuleni huku wakielezea jinsi walivyochukuliwa nani aliyewachukua kazi walizokuwa wakifanya huko chakula chao na mambo mengine mengi ya kushangaza May you be seated in the name of Jesus. Asi tuketi katika jina la Yesu. We want to read the word of God from the book of Luke chapter 2. Nasi nataka tusome neno la Mungu kutoka kitabu kile cha Luka sura ile ya pili. We want to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Nasi tutakwenda kufurahia uwepo wa Bwana. Father in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the day you have given us. Baba katika jina la Yesu asante kwa sababu ya siku ambayo umetupa I thank you for the presence of your spirit na kushukuru kwa sababu ya uwepo wa roho wako I thank you for the power that is here to heal us asante kwa sababu ya nguvu iliyopo kutuponya I thank you for when we remember the birth of our Lord Jesus we are full of joy and full of confidence asante kwa sababu tunapoikumbuka siku ya kuzaliwa kwa bwana wetu tuna furaha thank you for in you we live in you we move and have our being asante kwa sababu katika ndani yako tunakwenda ndani yako tunatembea na tunaishi I give you glory. Ninakupa utukufu. I give you thanks. Ninakupa shukrani. I worship you Lord. Ninakuabudu Bwana. You are the only God in heaven and the earth. Wewe ndio Mungu pekee mbingu na nchi. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. You deserve the glory. Wastahili sifa. You deserve the power. Wastahili nguvu. We worship you King of Kings. Tunakuabudu wewe mfalme wa wafalme. We give you glory. Tunakupa utukufu. We give you worship. Tunakupa ibada. You are the only God in heaven and the earth. Wewe ndio Mungu pekee katika mbingu na nchi. We bless you Lord. Tunakubariki Bwana. In Jesus holy name. Katika jina takatifu la Yesu. Amen. Amen. We want to read from the book of Luke chapter 2. Basi tutakwenda kusoma kwenye kitabu kile cha Luka sura ile ya pili. We want to read from the book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Tutasoma uh, Luka sura ya pili kuanzia mstari ule wa 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Luka sura ya pili mstari ule wa 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Luka 2 mstari wa 8. Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. Nakwenda kusoma kwenye Luka sura ile ya pili na mstari ule wa 8. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. Luka 2 mstari wa 8. Luke chapter 2 verse 8. Luka 2 mstari wa 8. It is written and there were shepherds living out in the field nearby keeping watch over their frocks at night and an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid i bring you good news i bring you news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of david a savior has been born to you he is christ the lord this will be a sign to you You will find a baby wrapped in a cross lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with angels praising the Lord saying, Glory to God in the highest and on the earth peace to men whom his favor rests. Na katika nchi ile walikuwako wachungaji wakikaa makondeni na kulinda kundi lao kwa zamu usiku. Malaika wa Bwana akawatokea ghafla utukufu wa Bwana ukawangaria pande zote wakaingiwa na hofu kuu Malaika akawaambia msiogope kwa kuwa mimi ninawaletea habari njema ya furaha kuu itokayo kwa watu wote maana leo katika mji wa Daudi amezaliwa kwa ajili yenu mwokozi ndiye Kristo Bwana na hii ndio ishara kwenu Mtamkuta mtoto mchanga amevikwa nguo za kitoto amelala katika hori ya kulia ngombe mara walikuwapo pamoja na huyo malaika wingi wa jeshi la mbinguni wakimsifu Mungu na kusema atukuzwe Mungu juu mbinguni na duniani iwe amani kwa watu aliyowaridhia 
this is a story that happened in the first century. Hizi ni habari zilizotokea katika karne ya kwanza. In the Middle East something happened in the first century. Kule mashariki ya kati kitu kilitokea As you know Jesus was born. Kama unavyojua Yesu alizaliwa and he was born on the earth just like us. Na alizaliwa kama wanadamu wengine wanavyozaliwa. Before Jesus was born the census was declared for all nations. Na kabla ya kuzaliwa kwa Yesu kulikuwa kumetangazwa hesabu ya watu. In those, de- in those days Middle East was under the Roman coron. Na nyakati zile uh, mashariki ya kati ilikuwa chini ya utawala wa Warumi. So Caesar a king of Rome Roman declared a censor for all citizens. Mfalme wa Warumi Kaisari akatangaza hesabu ya idadi ya watu. He wanted all people be counted. Akataka watu wote wahesabiwe. And the counting was that everybody was to go to his own native city for censor. Na ile hesabu yake ilikuwa kwamba kila mtu lazima arudi kule alikozaliwa. And you see Joseph was born in Bethlehem. Na Yusufu alikuwa amezaliwa katika mji wa Bethlehem. That was his native city. Pale ndipo ulikuwa mji wake wa asili. But in those days he was staying in another city. Lakini nyakati hizo alikuwa akiishi katika mji mwingine. So because of the censor he decided to go to his native city for counting. Na kwa sababu ya kuhesabu watu alilazimika kurudi kwenye kijiji chake cha asili. And so many people are traveling from the city they are living going to their native places. Na watu wengi nyakati zile walilazimika kusafiri kutoka katika miji waliokuwa naishi kurudi kwenye vijiji vyao vya asili. So Joseph and his wife also were traveling going to their native city Bethlehem. Hivyo Yusufu na mkewe wakalazimika nao kusafiri wakirudi kwenye kijiji chao cha asili. When they arrive in the city of Bethlehem. Walipofika katika ule mji wa Bethlehem, in that time there were so many Bethlehem's natives who were staying out of Bethlehem. Na nyakati zile kulikuwa na wengi waliokuwa kiishi Bethlehem ambao walikuwa nje ya mji wakawa merudi hapo. But Jesus was in Galilee as you understand. Na, na kama unavyojua kwamba uh, Yusufu alikuwa kule Galilaya. And he went to Bethlehem just for censor. Akalazimika kwenda kule Bethlehem kwa ajili ya kuhesabiwa. It was just two days, three days. Ilikuwa kama siku mbili tatu hivi. Just for counting. Kwa ajili ya kuhesabiwa tu. But in the, in the Old Testament it was prophesied that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Na katika agano la kale ilikuwa imetabiriwa kwamba Yesu atazaliwa Bethlehem. But how that could be possible that Jesus the father of Jesus Joseph was living in Galilee in Galilee. Lakini je ingewezekanaje hiyo kwa maana baba yake Yusufu alikuwa anaishi kule Galilaya. He was in Galilee. Alikuwa kule Galilaya. And and Mary was now expecting to deliver. Na Mary alikuwa akitarajiwa kuzaa. But he was in Galilee. Lakini alikuwa kule Galilaya. And the scripture was promised that Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Na maandiko yalikuwa yameahidi kwamba Masia lazima azaliwe Bethlehem. Then some four three days before the birth. Kwa hiyo kabla siku ine kabla kuzaliwa God provoked the heart of Caesar. Kwa hiyo Mungu akasema na moyo wa Kaisari declare that all people be counted tangaza kwamba watu wote wahesabiwe he did not he did not know what he was saying na hakujua ni kwa nini anasema hivyo because caesar was in rome kwa sababu kaisari alikuwa kule urumi but his heart was being provoked by counting the people lakini moyo wake ulikuwa ukimfukuta kwamba ahesabu watu he declared that all the people of the world of those days be counted na akatangaza kwamba watu wote wa dunia nzima nyakati zile wahesabiwe therefore joseph and his wife decided to go to their native city to be counted. Kwa hiyo Yusufu na mkewe wakaamua kurudi kwenye kijiji chao cha asili waweze kuhesabiwa. When they were going on the way, walipokuwa kienda kule njiani, they arrived in the city. Wakafika kwenye ule mji. On arriving on the city, walipofika kwenye ule mji, the delivery time for Mary alive. Na nyakati za kuzaliwa ikawa zimefika. It was very surprising. Ilikuwa inashangaza. Jesus father of Jesus was in Galilee. Na huyu baba uh, yani Yusufu alikuwa kule Galilaya. Just because of the declaration of the censor he came to Bethlehem. Sa kwa sababu ya tangazo la kuhesabiwa watu akaja huko Bethlehem. Not to stay. Sio kuishi. Just to be counted. Lakini aje ahesabiwe tu. When he just arrived these three days. Alipofika tu katika hizo siku tatu. Jesus was born. Yesu akazaliwa. Because it was prophesied that Jesus must be born in Bethlehem. Kwa sababu ilikuwa imetabiriwa kwamba Yesu lazima azaliwe Bethlehem. Ladies and gentlemen, what God says will come to pass. Ndugu zangu, Mungu akisema kitu lazima kipite. He was in Galilee. 
alikuwa kule Galilaya but because of Caesar's declaration lakini kwa sababu ya tangazo la Kaisari he came to Bethlehem akaja huko Bethlehem just to be born ili kwamba aweze kuzaliwa if god wants to fulfill something he will do what it takes to fulfill it na mungu akitaka kutimiza kitu atatenda ili kwamba kitimie if god has promised you something god will shake the heavens and the earth to fulfill what he has kama mungu amekuahidi kitu Mungu atazitikiza mbingu na nchi ili kwamba itimize ahadi yake. We serve a God who keep covenants. Tunamtumikia Mungu atuzae na kushika maagano. So, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Kwa Yesu alizaliwa kule Bethlehem. And the scriptures were fulfilled. Na maandiko yakawa yametimizwa. And when he was born, na alipozaliwa, because he arrived in Bethlehem when there were so many Bethlehem natives who came for counting. Kwa sababu alifika kule Bethlehem kukiwa na watu wengi ambao walikuja kwa ajili ya kuhesabiwa. Joseph wanted to lodge an hotel. Uh, uh, Yusufu akataka apate nyumba ya wageni. But on every hotel he went in it was full. Lakini kila nyumba ya wageni aliyokwenda ilikuwa imejaa. Because many Bethlehem natives came back home for counting. Kwa sababu wenyeji wengi wa Bethlehem walikuwa wamerudi nyumbani kwa ajili ya kuhesabiwa. Every house was full. Kila nyumba ilikuwa imejaa. Every house was full. Kila nyumba ilikuwa imejaa. Everywhere was no place. Kila mahali kulikuwa hakuna nafasi. And the time for delivering was coming nearby. Na wakati wa kuzaliwa kwa Yesu kulikuwa karibia. And then Joseph made a wise decision. Sasa Yusufu akaamua uamuzi wa busara. He saw a manger somewhere. Akaona hori mahali. The Bible does not tell whose manger was that. Biblia isemi ile hori ilikuwa ya nani? The owner of the manger is not declared yet in the Bible. Miliki wa hori ile bado hakutamkwa katika Biblia. And he saw a manger. Akaona hori. And 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 he he took his wife. Na akamchukua mkewe. And Jesus was born in a manger. Na Yesu akazaliwa katika ile hori la When we say a manger we don't exactly understand what it is. Na tunaposema hori wengi hatuelewi sana ni nini hasa. A manger is a place in the first century people used to feed flocks. Na hori katika nyakati za karne ya kwanza watu ni mahali ambapo watu walikuwa wanapatumia kulishia mifugo. They put glasses. Wanaweka nyasi and the frogs come and eat from the manger na mifugo inakuja inaendelea kula pale kwenye so is a dirty place kwa hiyo ni mahali ambapo ni pachafu it has cows and cattle pana ngombe na mbuzi hapo how terrible was it for a mother to deliver in a manger je inatisha kiasi gani kwa mama kuzaa mahali katika hori la ngombe if my wife would deliver in a manger i would be unhappy all the days of my life kama mke wangu angeweza kuzalia pale kwenye hilo hori ningekuwa sina furaha katika maisha yangu yote this was the only option ahead of joseph na hii ilikuwa ndio uchaguzi uchaguzi pekee kwa yusufu uliokuepo mbele yake probably everybody was looking what type of this man who does in plan that his boy is born in a manger labda kila mmoja alikuwa akimshangaa Yusufu kwamba huyu mtu ni wa namna gani kwamba mwanaye azaliwe kwenye hori are you normal je wewe ni wa kawaida you did not know the expecting deaths of your wife ya kwamba hukujua hata zile siku za mkeo kuja kuzaa are you normal je wewe ni wa kawaida are you crazy je wewe una akili sawa sawa the scriptures was to be fulfilled. Lakini maandiko ilikuwa yatimie. Let me tell you my brother. Ngoja nikwambie ndugu yangu. The scriptures must be fulfilled. Maandiko lazima yatimizwe. What God says it will be as he says. Kile ambacho Mungu amesema lazima kitakuwa kama alivyokisema. What he promises it will be exactly as he promises. Kile alichoahidi lazima kitakuwa kama alivyoahidi. Jesus was born. Yesu akazaliwa. Anyway in a manger. Na katika hori la ngombe. But in the night. Lakini usiku Something terrific happened. Kitu cha ajabu kikatokea. There were shepherds taking frog in the night. Kulikuwa na wachungaji ambao kichunga kwa zamu usiku. And when they were busy taking care of their frogs in the night. Na walipokuwa wanaendelea kuchunga usiku. The Bible says, Biblia nasema, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Malaika Bwana akawatokea. And the glory shone around them. Na utukufu ukawazunguka. And the angel appeared and said, I bring you good news. Na yule malaika akawatokea akawaambia, ninawaletea habari njema. For today in Bethlehem a savior is born. Ya kwamba leo katika Bethlehemu mwokozi amezaliwa. Christ the Lord. Na Kristo Yesu and this is the sign na hii ndio ishara you will see a baby boy wrapped in a cloth 
and laid in a manger. Mtakwenda kuona mtoto mchanga ambaye amevikwa mavazi ya kitoto akilala katika holi la ngombe. And the angels disappeared in heaven. Na yeye akapotea katika mbingu. The angels disappeared in heaven. Na malaika akaenda mbinguni. Actually the Bible does not say only an angel but a host of angels. Lakini Biblia haisemi ni malaika mmoja lakini nasema ni jeshi la malaika. Came from heaven. Likaja kutoka mbinguni to inform the shepherds. Ili kuwataarifu wale wachungaji. These shepherds were so surprised. Na hao wachungaji walishangazwa sana. Why should a host of angels came from heaven just because of a single baby boy born in a manger? Kwamba kwa nini jeshi kubwa la mbinguni lishuke kutoka mbinguni la malaika kwa sababu tu mtoto amezaliwa? There was a secret. Kulikuwa na siri that the savior was born. Ya kwamba mwokozi amezaliwa. The Lord was born. Bwana amezaliwa. The king was born. Falme amezaliwa. But in a manger. Lakini katika hori. And these shepherds went and they saw what the angel told them. Na hao wachungaji wakaenda wakaona kile ambacho malaika alikuwa amewaambia. And then Jesus was growing. Na Yesu akawa nakuwa. And then he died on the cross. Naye akafa msalabani. And from him we are saved. Na kutoka kwake tunaokolewa. This is my point. Hiki ndio kitu nacho kusisitiza. He was born in a manger. Alizaliwa katika hori. He was born in weaknesses. Alizaliwa katika udhaifu. He was born in a lower position. Alizaliwa katika hali ya chini. He was born in poverty. Alizaliwa katika umaskini. But yet. Lakini yet. Bado he became the king of all. Akawa mfalme wa wafalme. He was born in a manger. Alizaliwa katika hori. But yet, lakini bado, he was given the name above all names. Akapewa jina lipitalo majina yote. He was born in a manger. Alizaliwa katika hori. But yet, lakini bado, today he is seated on the right hand of the Father. Leo amekaa katika mkono wa kume wa Mungu Baba. He was born in a manger. Alizaliwa katika hori. But today, lakini leo, his blood washes all our sins. Damu yake yatusafisha dhambi zetu. He was born in a manger. Alizaliwa katika hori but today lakini leo his name heals jina lake linaponya lina his name delivers jina lake linatufungua his name saves jina lake linatuokoa he is the lord of lords yeye ni bwana wa mabwana he is the king of kings yeye ni mfalme wa falme he is the savior of the Ye world yeye ni mwokozi amen amen born in a manger amezaliwa katika hori but given the name that is above all names pewa jina lipitalo majina wote today in his name all knees shall bow and every tongue must confess na kwa jina hilo kila goti itapigwa na kila ulimi utakiri and there is no any other name na hakuna jina jingine under the earth tuliopewa chini ya mbingu that we must be saved of except the name of jesus pasalo kuokolewa isipokuwa ni jina la yesu he was born in feria alizaliwa katika Pungufu. He was born in weaknesses. Alizaliwa katika udhaifu. He was born in poverty. Alikuwa amezaliwa katika umaskini. But lakini he has the name above all names. Ana jina lipitalo majina yote. So how your life begins matters less but how your life ends. Jinsi maisha yako yanavyoanza haijalishi lakini namna unavyomaliza. Do not care of how your life begins. Usijali namna ulivyoanza maisha yako. Maybe your life begins in failures. Mwingine ulianza kwa kushindwa. Maybe your life begins in problems. Labda maisha yako ilianza kwa matatizo maybe your life begins in problems labda maisha yako ilianza katika matatizo born in a manger ukazaliwa katika hori begin in a manger ukaanzia katika hori begin in problems ukaanzia katika matatizo but i have good news lakini ninazo habari njema he who is born in a manger ye, is given the name that above all names ye, ye aliyezaliwa katika hori amepewa jina lipitalo majina yote all names majina yote born in a manger amezaliwa katika hori but became the conqueror of all the world aka akawa mfalme na mshindi katika dunia nzima Today all the demons tremble under this name Leo mapepo wote wanatetemeka mbele zake Today his name heals Jina lake linaponya Today his name rescues Leo jina lake linaokoa Today his name is above all names Leo jina lake liko juu ya majina yote Christ the Lord Bwana Kristo He is the Lord of Lords Yeye ni bwana wa mabwana And he is King of Kings Yeye ni mfalme wa falme And his name is above all nations all power all dominions all kingdoms Na jina lake liko juu ya mataifa yote juu ya falme zote juu ya mamlaka zote and there is no any other name na hakuna jina jingine the name of jesus jina la yesu the name of jesus jina la yesu jesus is the way for the people who are looking the way 
Jesus is the way for people who are looking for the way. Yesu ni njia kwa watu wanaotafuta njia. He is the living bread for people who are hunger. Yeye ni mkate wa uzima kwa walio na njaa. He is the living water for the thirst. Yeye ni maji ya uhai kwa walio na kiu. He is the alpha and omega. Yeye ni mwanzo na mwisho. He is the lord of lords. Yeye ni bwana wa mabwana. He is the king of kings. Yeye ni mfalme wa falme. He is the father of all fathers. Yeye ni baba wa baba wote. He says. Anaokoa. I shout today. Ninapiga kelele leo. He who is born in a manger. Yeye aliyezaliwa katika hori. Today, Leo, he is the savior. Yeye ndiye mokozi. Who is born in a manger? Yeye aliyezaliwa katika hori. Today, Leo, he is the healer. Yeye ndiye mponyaji. He is the Lord of Lords. Yeye ndiye Bwana wa Mabwana. Be encouraged today. Utiwe moyo leo. Maybe your life began in weaknesses. Labda maisha yako yalianza kwa udhaifu. In problems. Yalianza katika tabu. Probably no one loves you. Pengine hakuna naye kupenda. Probably you don't see any hope of your life. Pengine huoni tumaini katika maisha yako. You don't see any direction for your life. Huoni mwelekeo katika maisha yako. You are surrounded by problems you don't see the way out. Umezungukwa na matatizo hata huoni njia ya kutokea. You have got family problems. Unayo matatizo ya kifamilia. You have got marital problems. Unayo matatizo ya ndoa. You have every problems that can be mentioned on the earth. Una kila tatizo linaloweza kutamkwa duniani. You have a thousand and one problems. Unayo matatizo elfu moja na moja. E, and you feel you are confused na unajikuta kwamba unachanganyikiwa and you feel you don't see where to go na unaona huna mahali kwa kwenda i just want to encourage you tonight ninataka nikutie moyo leo jesus our lord yes bwana wetu he was born in a manger alizaliwa katika hori he was born in weaknesses alizaliwa katika udhaifu but today lakini leo his name heals jina lake linaponya today leo his name saves jina lake linaokoa today leo his name delivers jina lake linatufungua Today Leo he is above all names and he is coming back again Now anarudi tena Something happened Kitu kikatokea Jesus grew up Yesu akakua and he died on the cross Naye akafa msalabani and people knew that this boy was born in a manger Now kila mtu alijua kwamba huyu kijana alizaliwa katika hori and he was born in a poor family Naye alizaliwa katika familia maskini He died on the cross Akafa msalabani After the, on the third day siku ya tatu he rose from the dead akafufuka kutoka wafu there was news in jerusalem kulikuwa na habari yerusalemu remember the boy who was born in a manger and he died probably people say today he has risen from the dead na kumbuka kwamba mtu aliyezaliwa katika hori na akafa leo amefufuka People were so shocked. Watu walikuwa wameshangazwa. How could that be possible? Kwamba inawezekanaje hilo? He is born in a manger and he died. Amezaliwa katika hori and he died and he has risen from the dead. Akafa alafu amefufuka kutoka wapi? People were so shocked. Watu wakashtushwa sana. But people did not believe it. Lakini watu hawakuamini hilo. And one day na siku moja when Jesus wanted to go to heaven wakati Yesu alipotaka kwenda mbinguni he called all the disciples akawaita wanafunzi wake wote he appeared to them all akawatokea wote and he said i want to go to heaven akasema nataka kwenda mbinguni i have risen from the dead nimefufuka kutoka wafu i am alive niko hai do not be troubled in your heart wala msisumbuke moyoni mwenu if you believe in me believe also in my father kama unaniamini mimi muaminini na baba in my father's place there are many mansions katika nyumba ya baba kuna makao mengi If it was not so I would told you. Kama singekuwa basi ningewaambia. I have gone to prepare a place for you. Ninakwenda kuandaa mahali kwa ajili yako. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come to take you to mine. Na mahali pale nitarudi tena. And when he was talking to them, alipokuwa akisema hayo, a crowd came down. Wingu likashuka. They were all watching. Wote walikuwa kiangalia. This is a man who was born in a manger. Kwamba huyu ndio mtu aliyezaliwa katika hori. He was born in shame. Alizaliwa katika aibu. What is happening that a crowd is coming from heaven? Kwa nini basi wingu linashuka tena kutoka mbinguni? A crowd came down. A wingu likashuka. In the mountain and he went in the crowd. Naye akapanda kwenye lile wingu. And suddenly the crowd was going up. Ghafla lile wingu likaanza kunyanyuka. The crowd was going up. Lile wingu likaanza kunyanyuka. And probably Jesus was waving to them. Si ajabu kwamba Yesu alikuwa anawapungia mkono. He told them I'm going to my father. Akasema ninakwenda kwa baba. I am going to my father. Ninakwenda kwa baba. I will come again. Nitarudi tena. I am going. Ninakwenda. I am going. Ninakwenda. I am going. Ninakwenda. He was going to heaven. Alikuwa anakwenda mbinguni. They were so surprised. Walikuwa wanashangaa sana. This man who began in weakness. Kwamba huyu mtu alianza kwa udhaifu. This man who was a failure. This man who was rejected. This man who was a 
abandoned this man who was thrown away how can the crowd from heaven come and pick him watu akawa na shangaa ya kwamba huyu mtu aliyekuwa ameshindwa alionekana maskini alionekana ameachwa inakuwaje wingu linashuka kumbeba how possible can the crowd come from heaven taking somebody who is born in a manger inawezekanaje wingu litoke mbinguni kumchukua mtu aliyezaliwa kwenye hori how possible that a crowd come from heaven taking someone who was born in a miserable way inawezekanaje kwamba wingu litoke mbinguni kuja kumbeba mtu aliyezaliwa katika hali ya udhaifu ladies and gentlemen ndugu zangu how you begin matters less how you end matters a lot ulivyo unavyoanza maisha yako haijalishi lakini namna utakavyomalizia people may laugh at you today watu wanaweza kukucheka leo but lakini your tomorrow is brighter maisha yako ya kesho yatakuwa safi your tomorrow is brighter maisha yako ya kesho yatakuwa safi your tomorrow is full of hope maisha yako ya kesho yatakuwa mzuri be encouraged na utiwe moyo be strengthened na utiwe nguvu in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu and then when he was going to heaven na sasa alipokuwa kipaa mbinguni he was waving to them alikuwa akiwapungia mkono goodbye bye bye i was born on the earth nilizaliwa duniani i was born in problems nilizaliwa katika matatizo i was born in poor family nilizaliwa katika familia maskini i was doing carpentry camp and, camp with my father nilikuwa namsaidia uselemara baba yangu i am going to my father sasa now sasa ninakwenda nyumbani kwa baba yangu when he was going to heaven Alip- kwa kienda mbinguni everybody's eye was up kila jicho la mtu lilikuwa linatazama juu suddenly ghafla angels appeared malaika katokea they told the people wakaambia watu you people of galilee enyi watu wa galilaya why do you look gazing up kwa nini mnaangalia juu the jesus you see being taken away from you who yes mnaoona na paa he will come kenu. he will come back in the same manner atarudi kwa namna hiyo hiyo ladies and gentlemen ndugu zanguni Jesus is coming back. Yesu anarudi tena. Jesus is coming back. Yesu anarudi tena. I say Jesus is Na coming Jesus back. Yesu anarudi tena. Amen. Amen. He is coming back. Anarudi tena. We have to prepare for his coming back. Tujiandae kwa kurudi kwake. But many people say, watu wengi wanasema, when Jesus comes this will be the end of the earth. Yesu atakaporudi ndio itakuwa mwisho wa dunia. No. Hapana. Jesus is coming again in glory. Yesu anarudi tena katika utukufu. He is going to demonstrate his glory on the earth once more again. Atakwenda kuonyesha utukufu duniani tena. He is not only coming to take us to his place. Si anakuja kutuchukua tu kwenda nyumbani kwake. Before he comes to take us to his place. Lakini kabla hajaja kuja kutuchukua, he wants to demonstrate his glory here on the earth. Anataka aonyeshe utukufu wake hapa duniani. He wants to bring down his kingdom. Anataka kalete ufalme wake let thy kingdom come na ufalme wako na uje let thy kingdom come na ufalme wako na uje the kingdom of jesus shall come on the earth ufalme wa yesu utakuja duniani and the gospel of the kingdom of god shall be preached all over the earth and then shall the end come na injiri ya ufalme wa Mungu itahubiriwa duniani kote ndipo mwisho wa dunia utakapokuja. Glory is coming. Utukufu unakuja. Few days ahead we're going to see manifestations of God's power. Siku chache zijazo tutakwenda kuona udhihirisho wa nguvu za Mungu. We're going to see God's power manifesting in a tremendous way. Tutakwenda kuona nguvu za Mungu zikionekana kwa namna ajabu. We're going to see nations changed by the power of God. Tutakwenda kuona mataifa kibadilishwa kwa nguvu za Mungu. We're going to see kingdoms of darkness being uprooted. Tutakwenda kuona falme za giza zikingolewa we gonna see the kingdoms of darkness being thrown down tunakwenda kuona falme za giza zikiangushwa jesus is coming in power yesu anarudi kwa nguvu he is coming in power anakuja katika uwezo he is empowering the church yeye anatia nguvu kanisa sasa he is empowering the body of christ anatia nguvu anatia mwili wa kristo nguvu so be prepared ujiandae and be encouraged na utiwe moyo i just want to pray for you nataka niombe kwa ajili yako just bow your head basi inamisha kichwa chako sasa i want to pray nataka niombe father in the name of jesus baba katika jina la yesu how i thank you for today ninakushukuru sana leo as you remember the birth of our lord jesus tunapokumbuka siku ya bwana wetu yesu kristo as we celebrate tunapofurahia We thank you for what you have done to us. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu umekuja kile ulichofanya kwetu. We thank you for your glory. Tunakushukuru kwa utukufu wako. We thank you for your presence. Tunasema asante kwa uwepo wako. We thank you for our life is no longer the same. Asante kwa sababu maisha yetu hayako vile tena. We thank you for we, 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 we don't gonna be under the influence of the powers of darkness anymore. Asante kwa maana hatutakuwa chini ya nguvu za giza tena. And we praise you. 
By your stripes we are healed By your wounds we are rescued We appreciate your blood We thank you Lord We appreciate the blood that you shed on the cross for us Thank you for the nails on your hands Thank you for the crowns of thorns Thank you for the spear in your ribs Thank you for all what you have done to us. We give you praise Lord. We thank you Jesus. We thank you Son of God. We worship you today. We glorify you today. We magnify your holy name. We thank your holy name. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Father. Thank you Prince of Peace. Thank you Lord of Lords. We worship you. We give you praise. You are the only God in heaven on earth. There is none like you. 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 None like you. Hakuna. None like you. Hakuna kama we worship you. Kuabudu. You are the only true God on the earth. We give Tanzania into your power. Jesus. Yes. Go to the depths of Tanzania and to the peak of Tanzania. Ukamate kwanzia utosi mpaka wae wa Tanzania. In Jesus name. Katika china la yesu. Jesus name. Katika china la yesu. Take Tanzania. Ichukue Tanzania. Let it be for your glory. Na iwe kwa utukufu wako. Take the people of Tanzania. Ichukue watu wa Tanzania. Take the president of Tanzania. Ichukua wepo wa Tanzania. Take the cabinet of Tanzania. Ichukua bunge la Tanzania. Take the cabinet of Tanzania. Ichukua balaza la mawazira Tanzania. Take the parliament of Tanzania. Ichukua balaza la mawazira Tanzania. Take all the directors. Ichukua makurugenzi wote. Take all the commissioners. Ichukue makamishina wote. We thank you for the great harvest. Tuna kushukuru kwa mavuno makurugenzi. Thank you for you have thrown your sickle. And Tanzania is harvested. Tanzania is harvested. Tanzania is harvested. Tanzania is harvested. Amen. We're gonna celebrate the Lord Jesus. We just worship God and we pray. Simama, wakati nandera kumabudu buana na tuweze kuomba. Just stand up and pray. Simama, ili tuweze kuomba. I pray that to bless them. Inaomba bwana kwamba uwabariki. Touch their lives. Gusa maisha yao. Change their lives. Shika maisha yao bwana. Empower their lives. Shika maisha yao. In the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. I send you in peace. Ninaondoa kwa amani. God bless you. Mungu akubariki. Bless your life. Bariki maisha yako. Bless your home. Bariki nyumba yako. Bless all what you do. Bariki kila unachofanya in the name of Jesus. Katika jina la Yesu. I bless you. Nina kubariki. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and God bless you. Na kuende kwa amani na Mungu akubariki.